Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect up the PS4 controller up to your Linux machine so you can use it on the RPCS3 emulator, aka the PlayStation 3 emulator. So, let me show you the controller right now. You should be seeing the PS4 controller. There's two ways that you can connect it either via Bluetooth, which is wireless, or using a micro USB cable. I've got right here. But before we do that, there's a little bit of setup that you need to do. So if you open up RPCS3, go to pads, and you want to go to this link here to the RPCS3 wiki. When I click on it, for some reason it doesn't work, so I just go to copy link location. And so open up Chrome, paste it into there. And if you're struggling to still find it or that link doesn't work, you can locate it by going to the RPCS3 website, go to wiki, and search for UDEV. Okay, and then go to controller configuration, scroll down, and go to DualShock 4 controller on Linux. And we need to add these into this file here. So let's do that. Go to files, and what you want to do is go to other locations, your computer, go to etc. It is in UDEV. So I'm going to put in U, dev, rule.d, and I've already got it there. I am going to delete this. Yeah, I'm going to delete it. So just delete it like so. As currently, you probably won't be able to delete stuff or edit stuff in here. So what you want to do is open up terminal, type in CD. Actually, you don't need to do that. We can just type in chmod. So we're going to change the permissions of this folder to, you no, know, we can all use it. And then just do that. And do that. Okay, so that's the thing. Change the permissions, operation not permitted. Strange. Just command I ran before. So, so why is it not letting me do it? I wonder if it's because. Um, okay, that is strange. Ah, I know why. I've got to run it as a sudo command. My bad. So type in sudo at the start, click enter, type in your password. Yeah, there we go. I was already essentially in a sudo environment the last time I run it, hence why I didn't need a sudo command. So make sure you do that. Even though it didn't show the password, it, it, even in asterisk, it was actually, you know, tracking it. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so now in here, we should be able to, you know, edit these files. So what we want to do is copy that, paste it, and we're just doing that because we want a file in there. You can use a text editor and manually save it. This just saves us some time. What you want to do is copy this and rename this file there we go and then right click open with text editor or any other editor that you see fit Let's delete everything that's in there and copy everything from here so if we copy that into here to control s save and that is all saving now fantastic and now the last little thing is you can even restart your computer to apply the settings. Because I'm recording, I don't want to you know, restart. It's just not you know, the best thing to do. We can just run this command instead and then replug your controller. The mod is not plugged in, so when I plug it in, it'll be fine. But if it is, just disconnect it and plug it back in. So copy that. Go to terminal, paste it in. Press enter. It may ask you for your password depending on if you close down the terminal or not. Same system as here, just make sure you put in the password. And that's it. So you're actually all set up and ready to go. So what you want to do now, and I can close this down in here. But first of all, let me show you the wired option. So if I connect this, flight should turn. connect this 
and go to your Bluetooth settings, wherever they are on the Linux distro that you are using. You need to put this into sync mode. To do that, keep the share button and the PlayStation button pressed for about three to five seconds and this light will start flashing. There you go, it is now flashing. That's in pairing mode. It'll appear as wireless controller. Click that, it won't require any passcode and it's all connected as you can see. So either wired or wireless. And again, if you go back to pads, go to make sure DualShock 4 is selected because otherwise you probably got keyboard selected. Go to DualShock 4, do them here, click refresh. If you've got multiple devices, feel free to connect one of them up. And there we go. As you can see, these work down here as well, the way they would. And you can disable vibration or you know, enable it. Small, so just a little bit of vibration depending on what you want. There's another, you know, a few cool things you can do. You can specify the device class, or so maybe it's doing it for DJ or a guitar game, like DJ Hero or Guitar Hero. You can add a profile, and the benefit of this is maybe you want a different, slightly different configuration based on the game. Maybe you want to play a game where you can't use the analog sticks to move. You know, typically you can only use the arrows. So you would uh, maybe assign the arrows onto the analog stick, but you might only want that for one or two games. So you could create a profile and to actually change a control. So if I wanted to make R1, R2, do that and press the control. I want to click restore back to default and that is it and one of the last cool thing so you can actually change the led color to virtually whatever you want so maybe i want to change it to this red click ok there we go it is now changed i want to go back to restore to defaults but that's the cool stuff you can do one last thing to bear in mind actually two things if you want to have multiple controllers you can select it here and select the appropriate one and make sure you click save because if you do not then it will not save it so now just open up a game i want to launch up minecraft so i'm going to wait patiently for this all to load up still compiling the PPU modules but it shouldn't be long now okay still just waiting for the PPU modules to compile Should have done this before, <laughs> but just installed the Minecraft game just for this video actually. So I usually use Windows because my Windows machine is more powerful, but that's the one I would usually use for emulation. But this is it should be able to handle this fine as well. Okay, that's all you know, it's launching up now. Still going, it is literally still there. We go. So let me I'm turn the volume down. Not fully off because I do like the music. Usually turn it off fully off, but you know what? I'm gonna leave it on a bit. But as you can see, it's working. I pressed X a few times, you know, it got me through the first set of menus. Let me just get into a game so you can actually see it working, you know, with the analog sticks, with you know. The option button, you know, with the mining, with R2, you know, that sort of stuff. There we go. As you can see, it is working. I can mine. And there we go. And I can place a block here. That's it. Simple as that. So that's how you connect up a PS4 controller to your Linux machine using the for the rpcs3 emulator using a wire or wireless and that's it if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video